this is the big question. <laughs> How did he ask you? It's like a, it's almost like a proposal. It How is. did he ask you? And you know it's so funny because he didn't actually ask me when people thought that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, over time, he and I had had several very um, interesting conversations about the possibility. Mm -hmm. And every time, he would end the conversation by saying, you know I can't pick you. I'm going to pick someone from Baltimore. But if you were from Baltimore, I would definitely <laughs> pick you. But, you know. It's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, would always say, are you going to be okay? Mm -hmm. He was very concerned about how I was going to feel about not getting picked. Mm -hmm. And every time I would just tell him, just don't let the word get out till after I have my next fundraiser. Oh, okay. This is great for my fundraising, yeah. just the, the speculation. Yeah. And um, so when the day he really brought it up to me, he asked me out for coffee, and it was just another one of those get-together conversations. So when he started talking about... Um, his thought process for who he was going to pick, mm -hmm. it finally hit me that he was asking me. <laughs> and he didn't come right out and say it. His thing was, so if you get through the vetting process, I think that we're going to go with you. So that wasn't a definite proposal. Mm -hmm. That was uh, maybe. Okay. Probably. Mm -hmm. So I went through the vetting process, which was extremely stressful. I think I lost eight pounds in two weeks. Oh, boy. Not fun. Yeah. But in any event, when that was over, um, he never did say, yes, you passed. They just started scheduling pictures. Like, oh, so come in tomorrow. We're going to take pictures. <laughs> and then we'll have the announcement on Monday. Mm -hmm. But don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. Only your husband. Don't mm -hmm. tell anyone. And um, so on the day that the announcement was made, he said to me, you know, Jolene, I never actually asked you <laughs> to be my running mate, so I think I'll ask you at the announcement. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did at the podium. He said, Jolene Ivy, will you be my running mate? Oh, my God. It's like a proposal. I know. It was. Yeah. It was very funny. So when you take a look at your life right now, where you are right now, do you think it's anything like you thought it would be? Probably not, because I, I don't really plan. I've never been one of those people who had a plan in mind for how my life is going to go, and then I follow it. I just take opportunities as they come. Mm -hmm. So I never planned to run for public office, not until the day I decided to do it. Mm -hmm. It was um, not something I ever considered. So it was a surprise to my husband, to my family, to everyone who knew me when I made that decision. But um, up to that point, my interest in politics had been pretty much voting, and I'm really good about voting. I vote in every election. I'd be shocked if you could find an election that I'd missed voting. And um, beyond that, I was very enthusiastic about Jesse Jackson's campaign the first time he ran for president. And I was a very dedicated volunteer in his D.C. office. Uh -huh. And I loved that experience. And then later, when I was a, a, a producer at Channel 2 and I was looking to get another job, I just needed a new challenge, I found out about a press secretary's job available in Ben Carton's office. So I applied for that, and that kind of opened up that world That's of nice. politics nice. to me. So what's the difference between, this is a political question, mm -hmm. what's the difference between Doug Gansler and Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown when it comes down to the Maryland residents? Like, what is the difference? The biggest difference is the view of Maryland, mm -hmm. okay, and how willing are you to address the problems that we have. So Anthony Brown thinks that everything's great, and so therefore there's no need to change anything. So when it comes to education and addressing the number two achievement gap in the United States of America, that's not going to happen under his administration because his thing is we have number one schools. So if you have the number one schools, well, why would you change anything? And he believes that our business climate is great, which the businesses I talk to disagree with very strongly. So if the business climate is already great, are you going to change anything? Mm -hmm. No, because everything's great. So I think that what you'll see uh, with Anthony Brown, his attitude is things are great, let's keep things the same. We'll keep the same people in place, and that'll be it. Uh, with Doug, however, his view is, and my view, is that things aren't perfect. We have kids who aren't getting a good education. It really seems to break down according to zip codes. Mm -hmm. 
and if you live in a great zip code with lots of wealthy people, you're going to a good school. But if you live in other areas, not so much. So uh, Doug and I want to do things that actually address the achievement gap and that bring better education to children. Mm -hmm. And that's the one big difference. The other is that because Doug recognizes problems that we have in our state that affect businesses, whether it's um, regulations or taxes, he wants to make it possible for more businesses to grow and to remain in Maryland so that we can increase the number of jobs that are here. So instead of us losing $30 million as we did in our corporate taxes this last year, uh -huh. even though we've had a few years ago an increase in the corporate tax rate, we'll be in a position to have more businesses here, more jobs here, and bring in more taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do you bring to the ticket? Well, I bring a different viewpoint than anyone else. I mean, obviously, uh, women's issues are going to be top of my agenda, and everything affects women, everything affects families, so whether that's jobs or health care or education, you can be sure that those issues are going to get special consideration because I'm there to bug Doug about it. If, if his wife isn't bugging him hard enough, I'll be right there on the other side. Uh -huh. So that's going to be one big difference. As a mom, as a wife, as a public servant, as a working mother, I've got a different perspective than anyone else in the race. What do you think is the biggest issue that the people of Maryland are facing, the residents of Maryland? What is the defining issue that's, um, that needs to be addressed right now? The number one issue is definitely the need for more and better jobs. People are underemployed, people are unemployed, and we, our kids don't always have some place to work. I have a son right now who's about to graduate from college. Where is he going to work? Is he going to have to leave the state? I have another son who's in between high school and college. He's taking a, a gap year. Watching him spend this time trying out different things, which is great for him to have that opportunity, you can see that if he weren't planning to go to college in the fall, he'd be in big trouble. So you have five extraordinary boys. Five beautiful boys. <laughs> yes. Um, and so how do you balance that? I mean, how do you balance that? I don't know that I do balance it. I think when people talk about balance, they're kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just doing the best you can with every moment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, the only way I'm able to be in politics, and basically that's working more than a full-time job, mm -hmm. and run for office again, a bigger office, a statewide office, and also um, take care of my family, I couldn't do it without the support of my husband. I think single mothers have absolutely the hardest job that there is. Mm -hmm. I think they have a harder job than single fathers. Oh, yes. Because single fathers, everybody gives them props for doing what they should be doing anyway. But if a single mother, you know, gets stuck with her kids, well, it's her fault. Mm -hmm. But if a man is taking care of his children, we deify him. Mm -hmm. So I think that single mothers have the hardest job. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I certainly couldn't do what I'm doing now if it weren't for the uh, very strong support of my husband. Uh -huh. So when you look at your life and what you, how you grew up and the things that you had, what is it that you wish to give to your kids that maybe you didn't have? Well, the things I did have is a very loving father and stepmother. And of course, my mom loves me too. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't the one who was engaged in the day-to-day -day raising of me. It was my dad when and my, uh, my husband and I were planning to have a family. I thought it was important that I stay home with my children. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, maybe I could still be doing that. But <laughs> I think I'd had enough. Uh -huh. And I was ready to, to, for something new to do. Uh -huh. And, you know, I love my kids. And I'm still involved with their lives. But... I, um, at that point, at that season in my life, I needed to do something different. But I am glad that I was able to give those years to my children, even though I couldn't do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you accomplished <laughs> everything you wanted to accomplish in the House of Delegates? You're never finished. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always more work to do, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, it's my intention to be here just in a different capacity to make things happen. 
but I have had a great career here, and I've gotten um, great bills passed, either under my name or helping other people so, pass theirs. So, what do you like about him? What I like about him is he's open-minded, he's hardworking, and he's real. So, um, sometimes realness gets him in trouble when people <laughs> choose to read things into what he says, but he's just very honest, straightforward, and he doesn't mind ruffling feathers if it's going to accomplish his goals. And uh, I'm the same way, mm -hmm. so I might have a slightly different way of going about things, but he and I both are um, very committed to looking out for people, mm -hmm. and um, people over special interests. And I think that that's what, what uh, will get us over the line, mm -hmm. you know. In the end, it's voters who vote, not, not special interests or corporations. So in the end, when voters really look at the situation, I believe that we'll win. It's about the people. It's, it's all about, about the people. Yeah, that's, every vote counts. So it's about the people. When did you first meet him? Well, I first met him 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he and uh, my husband were both assistant U.S. attorneys together in D.C. Uh, then when he became attorney general, and that's the same time I was elected delegate, so we started to see each other here in Annapolis. I remember him stopping in my office when I was first elected, just paying you know, his social calls to everyone, and uh -huh. he kind of came in and sat on my desk and chatted me up, and, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of funny, but he's very um, casual, real, relaxed person, and, and he's got a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I can never complain about me being tired, mm -hmm. because Doug's already up before mm -hmm. I wake up, yeah. and he's not in bed till after I've gone to bed, uh -huh. and he works so hard, and I work hard, so mm -hmm. I figure if somebody can outwork me, yeah. They're doing something. Yeah.